My name is Tarjai Lair Salveson. For the past 12 years, I have been affiliated with Fæderlandsvenn, a regional newspaper in Norway, the smallest regional newspaper we have. My role there has been as a freelancer on a contract, as a regular employed investigative journalist, and also as head of the investigative unit in the newspaper, consisting of five people. I also write textbooks in Norwegian about journalistic method, and I specialize in access to information as a journalistic tool. Fæderlandsvenn is a newspaper which is 140 years old. It is published in Kristiansand, which is a town in the, on the southern tip of Norway. My hometown has just over 100,000 population, and the newspaper has a circulation of about 37,000, which means that uh, since every subscription is read by more than one person, most of the population in my hometown is, is reading the newspaper. In 1996, we started with an internet newspaper, as many other uh, newspapers did in the late 90s. The problem was that in the internet edition, we were giving away the articles for free. And many of the articles were short and funny and didn't concern serious matters. 10 years ago, our newspaper made a major shift in the online edition, wanted to make it more serious, wanted to publish all the articles from the paper edition now online, but we introduced the paywall. And we said, this is making the newspaper edition better, but this is a celebration of the paying subscribers in our core community. And from that day on, many of our problems started decreasing because decreasing uh, readership had been a major problem for a long time. But now subscriptions were going up again. And when we started measuring who wants to read a free article, who wants to pay for an article, we saw something funny. We saw that the articles people want to pay for are the serious and good articles. While the funny articles, that's what people expect to write, uh, read for free. Before the last local election in, in uh, this region, our newspaper decided to make big investigative projects, series of articles on poverty and social differences in, in our region. This series of articles, which was called Our Town, had a major impact in the discussions around the local election, an impact on political debate, created a lot of interaction with the readers. We did it in a untraditional way with many articles on the same topic, and we also bombarded our readers with numbers and statistics. We know that readers find it difficult to absorb a lot of numbers and statistics, but we spent a lot of time trying to wrap this in a way that, that would be interesting for them. So every time you click on the map to access a part of the town, you get a drone picture showing where you are in town, and you also get a mini quiz on that part of town, and all the questions are about social differences. The politicians and many of our readers did not know the extent of child poverty uh, before we wrote about it, and from there on, it created a lot of reaction. The politicians decided to improve the economic situation for the poor families in our home region. This journalism was not only present in the paper, newspaper, and in the web edition. We also had billboard commercials. We had a public meeting with political debate, and we had a concert event where this journalism was the centerpiece, but also brought a broader dialogue with, with our reader engagement. We did an investigation on a religious sect called the Jehovah's Witnesses. This is a very international religious sect. And the story was about sexual abuse of children. When we made this expose, we first published our story in the subscription area of our web edition and in the paper newspaper in Norwegian language. But since this sect is very international, we decided to translate this article into English. 
and spread it in social media. Then something very interesting happened. The international community of members and ex-members of this religious sect started translating our article into their languages. So our article appeared in Portuguese and Romanian language and in Spanish language and German. And it started appearing in more and more countries in different versions. And this led to a dialogue with an international readership and also to new tips, new sources and document leaks that led our journalism to a whole uh, new set of cases on the same religious sect because we started experimented with the language format that we were using. So this was a very interesting experience for us. Thank you for listening. I hope you have wonderful and good and constructive talks in Thessaloniki. In case any of you want to contact me, uh, here are my contact details. Thank you and goodbye.